Northeast Tonight, brought to you by Fuse Group of Institution Gohati. Hello and welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. First, top of the day at this hour, the headlines. Chinese goods burnt in Northeast. Movement to boycott Chinese products gained momentum in Arunachal Pradesh. Chinese company loses big Indian railway contract. Manipur Congress moves Governor Nazma Haptullah for special session of State Assembly to move no confidence motion against Biren Singh government after defection of MLAs. NPP to send two member team to Manipur to assess situation. Party President Conrad Sangma raises concern over Biren Singh's leadership. No going back on decision to oppose Biren Singh government, say Manipur NPP leaders. And gross violation of COVID protocols come to fore at a nursing home in Assam's Golaghat district town. Nursing home turns into COVID hotspot as seven cases emerge from hospital. All right, to tonight's debate. We hardly need any proof now to conclude that China indeed had a satanic intent when they killed 20 of our brave unarmed soldiers in the Galwan area at a height of 17,000 feet on Monday. Contrary to all military practices, the Chinese soldiers, according to various media reports, brutally attacked our Jawans with rods and clubs wrapped in barbed wire and nails. This means the Chinese were prepared for such an assault. This reminds us of the incident of the 2nd of March 1969 on the China-Soviet border when the Chinese soldiers fired and bayoneted to death 32 Soviet border guards when they challenged a Chinese patrol inside Soviet territory. If it was Mao Zedong that had, who had ordered the action in 1969, it could have been Xi Jinping this time round. China's intention clearly was to target the strategic road built by India within our territory and to perhaps preempt India from changing even the world order. Are the Chinese trying to take advantage of India's nimble diplomacy over the years. But India can be firm when the situation demands. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said India wants peace, but that it was also capable of protecting its sovereignty and territorial integrity, and that the sacrifices of our soldiers would not go in vain. To discuss as to why China was engaging in such crude military posturing, I am joined by a very esteemed panel tonight. Joining me from New Delhi is Ambassador Leela K. Ponappa, former Deputy National Security Advisor. Also in New Delhi, I have Lieutenant General A. S. Lamba, a former Vice Chief of Army Staff and a very well-known commentator on global affairs. From Dharamshala, I am joined by a well-known Tibetan activist, poet and writer, Tenzing Chundyu. In Itanaga, I have Arunachal BJP MP, Mr. Tapir Gao, and political and social activist, Jarpum Gamlin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Northeast tonight. First of all, I'd like to go straight to New Delhi to Ambassador Leela Ponappa. Ma'am, welcome to Northeast tonight. Nice to see you after a long time. Uh, Ambassador Ponappa, you know, what is going on? What do you make of it? Uh, the Chinese, you know, 
engaging in such kind of behavior, which is absolutely not hard in general military practices, killing soldiers of a neighboring country in such a brutal manner? That is the big question now. Hello, can you hear me, Vasmeer? Yes, I can. Carry on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the, the starting point has to be that we have no business being surprised. This is part and parcel of Chinese behavior. And I think for a long time, we have frankly allowed ourselves to be beguiled into thinking that the so-called mechanisms and other methods of maintaining peace and tranquility on the border are in fact a solution to the nature of our relations with China. What China has proven is that they are perfectly capable of pursuing an agenda by which they have created a triple fold dispute. This is a dispute within a dispute within a dispute. Let me explain this. The boundary is not settled. The LAC is not accepted. And now they are creating issues within the aspects of the LAC where we have traditionally been patrolling. It's as though somebody comes to the border of your house and says, okay, this property is mine. Then they come to the door and they say, sorry, the door has shifted or they bash it in. And finally, you're negotiating for space within your own house, within your own living room or your bathroom. I mean, this is what is happening. So uh, the uh, it's, it's one thing to say that we need to have stable relations with China. We must. There is a large economic relation as well, at least from our side, even though we are mostly exporting raw materials. But I think the way in which Chinese business has been allowed to come into India, the way in which they continue to occupy territory, frankly, the level of violence which uh, took place in uh, Ladakh uh, over the, the past few days, all goes to show that the notions that we entertained that China would do business as a responsible neighbor were totally incorrect. I think the time has come for a total revamp of our relations and our policies towards China. They must be realistic. I think for too long there has been a romanticization of China. I don't think there should be a demonization of it, but it must be realistic. And we have to answer some very hard questions, both with regard to the boundary right. and with regard to the larger right. aspects of we'll, our relations. We will expand on that. Very strong words there, Ambassador Leila Ponapa, the former Deputy National Security Advisor. Uh, well, yes, as you say, uh, Ambassador Ponapa, that you know the time has come to give a clear message to the Chinese. And uh, what more message than uh, a message on the business front, boycott uh, Chinese products and cancel perhaps the contracts. But even as we talk, there are credible reports that the uh, Indian Railways has cancelled a big contract to a Chinese company and the Indian government has asked the public sector BSNL and the MTNL not to use Chinese products in the upgradation process. Let me go to New Delhi once again uh, to Lieutenant General A.S. Lamba, uh, a very well-known defense expert, former chief, vice chief of army staff. Uh, General Lamba, how do you view the situation? Is, is it a, is absolutely shocking of course, Chinese behavior is not surprising, but what I'm saying by shocking means that the way the Chinese, in a most brutal manner, killed our unarmed soldiers, this is what is unacceptable. Uh, uh, can you hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly, General. Right, right. Thank, thank you, Wasbir. I think you, you summed it up uh, in a word that I would say is the behavior of the Chinese, uh, as Ambassador Ponapa has pointed out. They found reasons of why the LAC, there is a dispute within a dispute, there's a disagreement within a disagreement. And there is there have been years of mechanisms we found playing with words, evolving, evolving bypasses to the main key questions of resolving the LAC. Uh, what you've just seen and mentioned, I think three things are very, very important. One is the conduct of the Chinese at the strategic level. I think they've they've exhibited the highest form of distrust and lack of credibility at the strategic level. And that's where it emanates from. Down the line, the tactical actions are just a reflection of what the potential thought process is. Second is, the Army itself from the, or the PLA has shown the lowest bit of unprofessionalism. And I think if this is what these armies are made of, 
uh, they reflect the mindset not only of a soldier, many of whom serve for just four years and move on, but also how it uh, how it uh, percolates down from the highest level. So we've seen that uh, the engagements at various spots is is part of not just it should not be a part of uh, in seen as incidents, yeah. but more importantly seen as a part of a major strategy at several points, which has never happened before with the troops in large numbers coming up. And I think this is a strategy to stay yeah. and strategy in no hurry to move back. Okay, uh, I'll come back to you, General. Let me quickly go to Itanagar, to Mr. Tapir Gao, the BJP MP. Uh, you know, Mr. Tapir Gao, there is already a movement in Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, you know, the Chinese should be damn worried now. The people are protesting on the streets. They're burning Chinese products. The movement is spreading in Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, you have, of course, been, uh, you know, raising this issue inside and outside parliament. You have been extremely vocal about the need to be wary and, uh, and, uh, and you know, not to take the Chinese, uh, you know, not to trust the Chinese uh, that much. Mr. Tapir Gao. Uh, Wasbir Sahib, this is the right time that we all should realize. Today, the entire whole of Purnasal Pradesh, our party workers and the social activists, they have burned APGs of the Chinese uh, president and against PLA. Rightly, the BSNL and MTNL and the railway has taken up the issues and in the right direction and uh, the CIT has also taken up this issue. Now the whole of this country should take up this issue that we must boycott China in all field, in all respects that we should extend Modi ji ne ju kaha ki atma nirbhar pro now we have to generate our atma nirbhar through our atma vishwas and we can fight any sort of eventuality against china this is the right time that we need to work together and fight together not by bullet by wallet तो ये अरुणाचल में जो अभी आंदोलन शुरू हो गया है अभी चाइनीज का जो गुड्स है चाइनीज गुड्स जो जलाया जा रहा है तापिर गांव जी ये क्या अभी बढ़ेगा अगले आई मीन आने वाले दिनों में ये क्या फैल जाएगा सारा अरुणाचल में ये सारा अरुणाचल में फैलना चाहिए वी नीड टू मोटिवेट आवर पब्लिक एंड सिविलियंस ऑल्सो एंड ये नॉट ओनली अरुणाचल ये जो है सारा पूर्वोत्तर राज्य में होना चाहिए सारा देश भर में होना चाहिए नाउ वी शुड शो द चाइना हाउ माइटी द इंडिया इज हाउ स्ट्रॉन्ग द इंडिया इज वी नीड टू एक्सप्रेस एंड एक्सपोज आवर केपेबिलिटी एंड आवर स्ट्रेंग्स टू द वर्ल्ड आल्सो दैट वी कैन सर्वाइव विदाउट चाइनीज गुड्स Absolutely. Uh, I, I am also joined. Let me go to Dharamsala. I am joined by uh, Tenzing Chundiu. If I am pronouncing your name correctly, Tenzing. Uh, Tenzing is a very interesting personality. He was born in India. India is, of course, almost his second home. His parents fled Tibet in during the uprising after the crackdown in 1959. Uh, Chundiu was born and educated in India. Chundiu, welcome to Notice tonight. Why do you think, do you think the Chinese are absolutely jittery? The Chinese seems to be absolutely angry that India is building infrastructure al along its borders, having access to airports right under the nose of the Chinese. Uh, what do you think? W what is going on? In the, why are the Chinese so jittery? Why are they indulging in such an unprofessional military action? Okay, uh, we'll have to fix that. We'll have to reconnect with Tenjing. Uh, now let me let me go to Jarpom Gambling before coming back to Ambassador Ponappa and General Lamba. Uh, Jarpom Gambling, welcome. Jarpom Gambling is a well-known political and social activist, leader of the NPP. Uh, Jarpom, last two days, 
I mean, you are located in Arunachal Pradesh. We have seen such kind of transgressions and in ingresses by the Chinese PLA in Arunachal Pradesh as well. But did you expect that the Chinese to be absolutely, uh, you know, unprofessional using nails, clubs, barbed wire to attack an unarmed group of uh, uh, soldiers belonging to a neighboring country? Absolutely, I think uh, when you when China is treating India as enemy, I think uh, they were prepared to do that, and it's very unfortunate to learn that uh, an officer of Indian Army, of a rank of a colonel, went to meet those Chinese people without weapon. So it took me by surprise when I got to know about it, uh, when I read about it in the paper. But, you know, when it comes to Chinese, we should be prepared for it. You know, they have been hoodwinking us, they have been fooling us for, for decades together. I think it's not just that. I think entire Himalayan states has to be careful and the, and the armed forces deployed for long-range patrols and everybody needs to be wary of the Chinese. Absolutely. You know, Jarpum, the picture on the visual, picture on the screen, the pictures, that, since you know... Now that... You, you know, Jarpum, let me draw your attention to the visuals on the screen. Yes. These are protests in Arunachal Pradesh. We'll go back to that visuals. Uh, yes. We'll go back to that visuals in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, yes. Jarpum. Yes, these are the visuals. You know, there's been a big protest today during the whole day in different parts of Arunachal Pradesh. Do you think it is angry yes. people coming out of the streets, isn't it? Burning yes. Chinese goods. The people's anger cannot be undermined. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely, I think it's very unfortunate, but to say that, you know, for us people in Arunachal, the incident, that incursion that's happening, the uh, fist fight that has happened in Ladakh sector, actually it has come as a blessing in disguise because uh, just now you spoke to our member of parliament, Dapir Gauji, in fact he has been raising it in parliament about the incursion in Arunachal, but, you know, it has been met with muted response from dead, North, North Block and South Block. And I think the time is right that, you know, our youngsters in Arunachal, Let's the people in Arunachal, should Let's have everybody on the screen. The location and show the disgust. I think in a way, yes, in, in a way, today it was just... Let's CGP have everybody on the screen. And uh, PLS effigy, I think, given a choice, that people could be burning effigies of the Indian, Indian leaders or leadership also. They have not been paying heed to the rest... Of Okay, well, the line. The appeal of the okay, hold of your thoughts, Jarpom. Jarpom, hold, Jarpom, 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 hold your thoughts. Hold your thoughts, Jarpom. Yes. Uh, Ambassador, Ambassador Ponapa, uh, you know, the international media today have flashed very, very shocking pictures of clubs and, you know, makeshift implements with barbed wire, nails, and iron rods, and so on. I mean, you know, that means that the Chinese PLA were absolutely prepared to attack the Indian soldiers at the height of 17,000 feet while they were supposed to be disengaging. Well, I think this is where it is very, very important, A, to be realistic in understanding what the enemy is up to. In this case, the manner in which they first came into the areas, not just at one point, you know, many apologists for China will say, oh, it was a local action. It was a mid-level officer who took the initiative. That's nonsense. These things do not happen without orders from above. And the manner of the intrusions very, very clearly indicated that they had in the intention of staying and of grabbing territory that India really should have been patrolling. But that's another issue for another discussion. Uh, so clearly it was premeditated, and I think this is what our external affairs minister has conveyed to his counterpart. But why should we be surprised? This is a country that has been in occupation of a large part of Indian territory for many years. It's a different matter that the governments, different governments decided that we needed to develop an equation. But we should never have any illusions about their intent to take the maximum advantage whenever the opportunity presents itself. Now, yeah. why the opportunity presented itself here, as I said, is a matter for a different discussion. But uh, we should uh, not have no illusions about their intentions. They have certainly uh, tried to gain the maximum opportunities 
from the economic openings that we have afforded them and other countries in the yeah. growth of our economy. But it is the time has come where we have to take a look at the totality of the relationship and make develop a strategy. This is not a time for just for anger. It's a time for cool planning and for strategization, both with regard to beefing up our defenses on the ground. And General Lamba would certainly, uh, I think, uh, have a lot to say about that. Right. Because too often we treat defense and national security as exclusive from economic development. The two are totally interlinked. When our boundaries are secure, India can progress. When our boundaries are not secure, there are problems all around. So uh, this is the time to review the nature of our relations with China. Absolutely. Uh, General Lamba, you know, uh, in your long career of four decades in the Indian Army, you had several stints in the Northeast as well, General Lamba. Uh, have you seen any army in the world, uh, you know, attacking and killing their opponents of a, uh, I mean, their uh, fellow army soldiers of a bordering nation in such a brutal manner? And again, there was one instance, uh, 2nd of March 1969, and again it was China. They bayoneted and clubbed to death 32 then Soviet Union border guards of the Soviet Union. You know, that was again the Chinese were patrolling the border and transgressed into the Soviet Union. And when the, and the Soviet border guards came and challenged them, they fired upon them, first killed six of the soldiers. And then after a while during the entire day on that particular day, fateful day, they bayoneted to death 32 uh, Soviet soldiers. This is absolutely shocking. As a, as a soldier, what thoughts cross your mind, General? Well, uh, Vasbir, Vasbir, I think this is a very serious issue that should bother the PLA more than the Indian Army. It reflects what the mindset, the level of training, and the level of action that the PLA troops are really being trained and capable of. You know, it's, it's something that is most unprofessional, like I said, but it's also a very bizarre event which probably will hold China right from the top leadership accountable for this kind of bludgeoning people to death with the things. And to my information, they had come prepared for it. They had come with a couple of vehicles, which had, I believe, according to media reports, it had, tent, it had rods, it had angle iron pickets, it had, uh, you know, nails, which looks as if they were engineering stores that you use to pick up, uh, you know, to demarcate a line of uh, control or a line of, you know, demarcation between the two uh, uh, troops in the forward area. But here, it, it one little could one realize that it was all very, very pre-planned to undertake an operation for which I am certain for once that this is unethical, unprofessional, and premeditated because, according to reports again, a small a patrol went to verify whether the troops of China have moved away or not. This, true, this patrol was quickly engaged by the Chinese. By the time the small reinforcement to this patrol came up, there were more than 250 Chinese which had descended. So I think, unlike professional armies, they have tried to localize this action at the tactical level thinking that this is the shortest cut to teach lesson to the troops, Absolutely. The, to the Indian troops, who yeah. stand a huge amount of experience, unlike the PLA, who you really are, who are distinct in their operations. And I'm sure they are very, very inadequate because if this is what they've been taught, you know what, what okay. we Okay, okay, I'm, uh, okay. Uh, finally, I'm getting through to Tenzing Chundiu in Dharamsala. Tenzing Chundiu, as I've said, is a Tibetan activist, writer, and poet. Uh, he uh, was born in India, educated in India. Tenzing, when you see, when you have, we have seen visuals, when you have seen the pictures, when you have read the story, heard the story about how brutally the Chinese attacked our soldiers and what are they up to? Are they extremely jittery, according to you? Are they extremely in a panic mode, the Chinese? Because India is building up infrastructure. India can reach, uh, uh, I mean, the airport close to the Chinese uh, territory in that area at a, at a, at a very great height, 15,000 feet. We have an airstrip now. So do you think this is panic reaction? What are your thoughts, Tenzing? Firstly, I'm 
I am as a Tibetan refugee, born and raised in India, I'm deeply hurt that we are having to see such kind of brutal attacks on Indian side this time. Uh, but we must know that China looks at anyone with great sense of superiority. Right. What China has done in their in China's occupied Tibet, the country from where they are doing launching this attack on India is Tibet, which is my country. They have occupied Tibet. From Tibet, they are launching this attack and they have killed our Javans. And they are, they are doing this because uh, from Tibet, they think they can do whatever they want. They are habituated in thinking that they can do whatever they want, but India must not. They have built roads, they have built bridges, airfields. They have done that 30 years ago. And now they are. They see when Indians are building their roads to secure our border, they have this sense of superiority to say India, India cannot do it. So therefore, they have not only invaded India, they have maintained the occupation, and they have killed our people. Absolutely. This is not. This is not done. We have to protest this. Tibetans and Indians, we are together in this fight, and India. For the first time, is now there is a new awareness because many Indians do not know India recognizes Tibet as a part of China. Tibet is 2.5 million square kilometer of land, and China has occupied this for the past 70 years. Okay, India I'll, I'll come back to you, Tenzing. The, I'll the come back to you. The Tibetan people, yeah. Tenzing, so Tibetans your and Indians can come together and fight against China. I will. I will come back. To, I'll come back to you, uh, Tapir Gauji. Tapir Gauji. Uh, now you know. Uh, you have seen that uh, the Indian companies, the Indian government, appears to have clearly act because the Prime Minister has made it clear that we want peace, but if necessary, we can demonstrate, and we are quite capable of protecting our territorial integrity and sovereignty. That is the message. That is a very clear cut message which. The India has sent to the Chinese, and the Indian people are already on an on a, in in the mode of a movement against Chinese products. And today, the Indian government has demonstrated its intent. The railways have cancelled a huge contract, and the telecom ministry has con has asked state-owned companies not to buy Chinese products in upgradation. So, what do you think, as a BJP MP, Tapir Gauji? This is a move in the right direction. Uh, the country is on the right track and on the right direction under the leadership of Modi ji. Modi ji has not only said that, he has given the full authority to the armed force to decide on the sport, what compel them on the sport to act on the sports. This authority, this power has been empowered to the army personnel on the grounds also. The, today, Hussein, I'll tell you, Baghdadi has been assassinated. Today, Jinping became Baghdadi. All his PLA armies are IS, IS soldiers. They don't have any disciplines of army. They don't have any disciplines on the ground and with the neighboring countries. Now, the India have to look into it very seriously. We should not sit inside the in, inside our room and the houses when our army are sacrificing their life on our soil in Absolutely. Galwan Valley. All yes. our countrymen should come out and raise voice and act on the street, and even all. The companies, other companies, and all other PSUs, all other government undertakings, all other ministries should also take up the same what railways, telecoms all has right. taken up, 
in the right oh, time oh, i would like oh, to see all that right. I think, in tomorrow's I think news in today's more ministries absolutely more ministries psus also take up these issues right in today's day and world market forces can really act one create wonders if india decides to impose a sanction of sorts sanction of sorts i think that is going to really hit the chinese really really hard i'll go for a short break don't go away i'll be right back Welcome back. Uh, Ambassador Ponappa, you know, do you think now, as I've said in my introduction, India has been engaged in, as I've used the word, nimble diplomacy for so long. But now, do you think time has come for India to mobilize global opinion? Uh, because what is what cannot be expected? Well, it is well known that China has been claiming parts of Indian territory. That is uh, an old thing, you know, because that is the reason why we have been engaged in talks for so long with the Chinese. Uh, there have been st stretches which the Chinese are claiming and so on. But the manner in which they have killed our soldiers, the methodology they adopted, the crude manner, the brutal manner, the, and this at a time after the after the sixth of June agreement, where they were they, the two armies decided to disengage. I'm coming with this question to General Lamba as well. So, do you think this is unacceptable? And do you think India should now mobilize international opinion at least on this issue? I don't see any problem in mobilizing international opinion. In fact, international opinion has been uncomfortable with the manner of the rise of China. And it's very evident and growing assertiveness to the point of aggression, not just on our borders, but also in the South China Sea, in the East China Sea, with regard to the different islands and so on and so forth. So this has been a pattern of Chinese behavior. And there should be really, I think international opinion would be very clear. But let us not expect that international opinion will take care of our situation. We have to deal with the situation ourselves. Now, with regard to the earlier discussion about boycotting Chinese goods, wallet not bullet and so on, we, let, let's be realistic about it. Nothing is going to happen overnight. The, there is a border situation. It has to be dealt with tactically by the army. That's one aspect. But separately, we need to develop a strategy of uh, developing our own companies, our own producers, and working with other countries so that China is not able to take undue advantage of the facilities by which India has entered the global economy. What do I mean? For example, if you take Chinese power equipment, there was a time when the specifications of Indian tenders favored Chinese producers rather than BHEL. Yeah. Likewise, the tariff on power equipment was less than the WTO prescribed floor. So, you know, th there were too many apologists for China saying that the economic relation would bring stability to the military equation on the border. Now, very clearly, that is not the case. At the same time, let us not fool ourselves. China is a huge global economy. There are supply chains involved. Nothing should be done in a rash manner, but it must be strategized. Absolutely. Nothing in a rushed manner, but it must be strategized. Uh, General Lamba, I'm coming to you, Japam Gamlin and uh, Tenzing and Kapi Gauji. Uh, General Lamba, you know, uh, now we have we have seen that India is building infrastructure and why Galwan Valley? Why Galwan Valley has suddenly become so important? Perhaps that is because that is the only that is that gives India a direct access to the Akchai Aksai Chin. So that is the area, and we have we have operationalized airports at a great heights uh, where you know big aircrafts like the Globe Master is able to land. And that I'm talking about the airstrip at Dolat Beg Oldi in that particular area. Of course, we have advanced landing grounds in Ornachal, uh, you know, uh, looking down at the Chinese. So we, we, are, we are a different military today. So 
do, even despite all these things, do you think that is the main trigger? The Chinese are extremely panicky and worried. Uh, must, must be you have you have a very good point there. But I, I'll take you back for about for briefly to why we have come to this state that we see this as a strategic sensitivity of China. First, in their military strategy, let's not forget, like Tenzin had just touched briefly, that over the last 40 years, they have come along through Tibet about 2,000 miles, gradually built roads right up to the Indian borders and up to the neighbor, India's neighbor states. All of this they have done to be able to mobilize when the time comes. You know, there was a strategy once we used to see that the Chinese, if they plan, they would need two full seasons. That's a year and a half to build up. But today, they are right on the borders. Whatever the idea has similarly on our own side of the LSE, it's yeah. an understanding, it's a norm that you can build any infrastructure that you need for connectivity, for your defenses, for your security purposes, and that's an understood bottom norm. No, no country can challenge this on the other side. The road that we are talking of actually runs from southeast, if you take, it starts from Pankanso, it goes to Chushul, Kalwan Valley, and on to DBO, uh, you know, Dollar Big Oldie that you just mentioned. Right. Now, this is a strategic road because this is direct, this, on this is directly dependent a movement of troops, our relocation of troops, our contingency planning, and all that goes with a strategic forward line defense infrastructure. True. The, the DBO has been functional for decades. It's not a sensitivity. So suddenly this road cannot be something that has suddenly struck the Chinese that they, they are at a disadvantage. Second, a couple of miles deep in depth also, there are there are there is another parallel road that runs in depth, almost parallel to this, that also gives access to the depth formations as and when they need to mobilize. So right. I think here, the, the point that China is picking up is both strategic sensitivity. It is an instant that they want to provoke a reaction that leads to somehow some kind of a provocation that, that is unjustifiable to anyone who thinks logically, but to them, that's the only option how they can disrupt this entire thing. So strategic importance of this area, DBO, yeah. has always been there. Absolutely. But I think this is an excuse, a premise, this a context drawn. This is an excuse. This is just, confrontation this is just, an, just an excuse. Now, uh, Jarpum Gamlin, you know, uh, for a government, it may be difficult to overnight uh, announce that, okay, from tomorrow we are boycotting Chinese goods, we will cancel every single, uh, you know, contract that we had given, there are WTO regime and so on and so forth. But, but as the citizens of this country, 1.3 billion Indians, they are free to boycott Chinese goods from right from right now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you are right. I mean, we are free to boycott, but you know, in uh, boycotting is is a mark of protest. But however, in the long from from the long term perspective, I don't see it uh, feasible that you know it can go on. But at the end of the day, you know, in a global economy, uh, in a global world today, I am not uh, Jarpo. Let me let Chinese, me bring to your notice. You see, you see, I am not. I am not talking about yeah. supercomputers or I am not talking about the, you know, critical chips and so on. Even in Diwali, the diyas are made in China, the lights are made in China. For the Muslims, the skull cap, the rosary and the prayer mat are made in China. It is ridiculous. Uh, this is not rocket science that India, why, uh, why can't we buy our own products? Is it because we get a few rupees wa cheaper? Wasbir, I got, Wasbir, I got, Wasbir, Wasbir, I got your point, but what I'm saying is, as a mark of protest, it's good, you know, to boycott. But in long term, it doesn't solve, it doesn't solve any problem. Because, you know, economically, we are just about three, three trillion and they are 14 trillion, they are about four times. That's that apart. Important point here is for government of India to learn today is now you know you started developing the Ladakh Let's sector, have the Galwan sector. You started building infrastructure. The Chinese have problem. Now uh, my point is, if you want to compete with China, it's for Indian government. 
to ensure that we have similar kind of infrastructure in the border state like Arunachal where the border is porous and LAC or LOC, whatever you may call it, it's not defined and incursion keeps on happening. You know, and also from military right. perspective, yeah. what do you have oh, okay. on the northern bank of Brahmaputra? You tell me. The best you mm -hmm. have is the tip of the southern, uh, southern part of the Brahmaputra is in Tejpur. Beyond that, what do you have? You have nothing. Okay. Uh, so I'm, militarily also... Okay, Ambassador, Ambassador also, Ponapa. Indian yes, Ambassador Ponapa, I wanted to make a to point. I'm coming to you, Tenji. Today, today uh, hold your thoughts. Uh, uh, yeah, Jarpo, I get your point. You have made your point. Yes, Ambassador Ponapa. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Ambassador Ponapa, yes. Yeah, that, I, I think, unfortunately, audio has not been very good. So perhaps I haven't quite got everything that my co-panelists have said. But I would like to go back to the point I made right at the outset, that we must not have any illusions about China's intentions, in both in their official documentation as well as in, in the declaration of their doctrines and strategies, as well as in their behavior. They have shown that they have regional ambitions as establishing themselves as the hegemon in Asia and as the countervailing power to the United States in global terms. There's no question about it. So they want to see a weak India which provides them with opportunities and so on. Absolutely. Now, I think for too long, and I'm not talking just about this government or previous governments, we equate public events and diplomacy and symmetry and all that with realities on the ground, but that is not the case. Absolutely. You might have a good photo op which goes well down, which goes down well with the media, but we have to look at the ground situation in terms of where our interests yeah. lie. Now, right. I've heard uh, a discussion on the need for us to develop our infrastructure. For too long has this been neglected. I have absolutely, said it on absolutely. Many channels. We Do are an under-defended country in the sense that we do not provide our armed forces with the extent of resources and capabilities that are necessary in terms of equipment, in terms of the kind of facilities that are required to ensure that India remains Absolutely. strongly things are, defended. Things, of course, Too often things, we let uh, Ambassador, uh, uh, for I, does not work uh, for yeah, national interest. Absolutely, uh, but but things are changing for the better uh, in recent years, and we'll hope that things change more for the better. Uh, before going to uh, Tapir Gauji and General Lamba, uh, Tenjing uh, Chundu, Tenjing, uh, you know. It has been more than five decades since his holiness, the Dalai Lama, has been staying in India. Uh, but that is, that, is, that is now an old story. Why, according to you, what is the, what, what, why are the Chinese behaving in this manner now? You know, when the world is battling COVID, when India is battling COVID, and don't forget the COVID started in China, and a lot of people would like to believe that it's a biological weapon that the Chinese have unleashed on the world community, on the world. So what do you think, Tenzin? Well, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear your questions properly, but um, see, when, when China is doing this kind of antics, we, we get to see that what China is doing has to do much with their internal policies. Xi Jinping is facing international isolation. At the same time, he's facing internal criticism from within China. So he has to not only uh, face his, fail, his international uh, policy failure, he has to answer to his own people. There is a power struggle within China. There are a number of other uh, uh, Chinese leaders who want him to step down and other leaders to come up. They see that Xi Jinping's policies have failed. The exports are falling. They have lost millions of jobs. They are losing companies to many other countries. So they are now having to uh, challenge others. And in order to keep his flock together, he has to 
constantly show that there is international attack on China in order to silence the internal criticism and the power struggle. And this, this attack on India is a way to divert politics. He may not lead a uh, full-on war against India, but this kind of tactical attacks is a way to bring new attention to his own people, to divert right. that. But okay. we know that okay. when they do this, All right. our Javan's lives are lost. We are losing land on the border. So therefore, we have to be extremely, take this very seriously. From Ab absolutely, the, from I, think, the I think, I think, I think, I think, Tenzing, there is no army, doubt, there is no doubt, the there is no public. doubt that the Indians so are we, taking it very seriously. I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to intervene here. Sorry about uh, uh, having to cut you a little short here. Uh, General Lamba, you know, what is the road ahead now? What is, a, what, are, what are the things that you would like to see in the days ahead? as far as India's response is concerned. Of course, nobody is talking about a war. Uh, I, I think that's a, that, that is the major question in everyone's mind today with the political leadership as also with the military leadership. Yes, it is the biggest challenge for, the diplo for diplomacy, which has worked but little in the recent past with China. I think three things are very important to say. You can work with a country that shows some kind of reliability, credibility, and can honor negotiations and engagements. A country that has lost its credibility and which has a double speak on every situation shows that it's, it tantamounts to saying that say what you may, we will do what you like. Our territory is our territory and what is yours, where we think it is our territory is our territory. So I think with this kind of imbalanced view that the Chinese have exhibited, there are three things that we need to do. First, as far as the, the bottom line, the bottom uh, most option for me is, as, uh, the, as my experience tells me, is negotiations and talks. Well, we, we always keep saying that negotiations and talks must, be, must, must lead, in this case, perhaps, for, a, for this scenario, is the most bottom line, bottom uh, most uh, option. Second is, get... Uh, try to get the LSE converted into an international border. That should be the point where all our negotiations and attempt should finish. Having come this far, having known that the Chinese have right. come in all the way through Tibet and put, and uh, confronted situations like this, and finally, Vasveer, I think what is important is we must get prepared for any kind of a conflict and any Absolutely. kind of a confrontation we, we, is where the final and the first option lies. General, what you are essentially saying is that we need to keep our powder dry. Uh, for lack of time, I, 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 I'll very quickly go to Mr. Tapirgao. Tapirgao ji, your final comments, 20 seconds. See, oh, now this country, under uh, Nehru, he thrust Su Enlai and Mao Situ. The mistake Nehru has done with uh, Mao Situ and Su Enlai should not be repeated again, Jinping today, by our leader Modi ji, because you can't trust Chinese, you can't trust their policy, their economic policy, their political policy, their all front. They have an attitudes of enemy with all his neighboring country. So it is the right time to boycott China. Right time to boycott China. I think Indian leaders have been pragmatic after 1962. Of course, that if we, if we pass that off as an aberration, I think after that we had Natula in 1967 and there was a Chinese ambush in Arunachal Pradesh in 1975. After that, this has been the most blistering attack where we have lost so many soldiers. That is extremely unfortunate. Yes, Indian response will be interesting to watch. Ambassador Ponapa, final comments, 20 seconds to you. Final comments, Ambassador Ponapa. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I didn't realize that was for me. Um, well, I, I, well, clearly the events that have happened have been a shock uh, to the whole nation. 
and our uh, deepest condolences go to the families that have lost their loved ones. Yeah. Uh, this is a wake up call for India to deal with the matter both on the ground and with regard to national policy in a comprehensive manner. Yeah. We should not be taken in by photo up public events, but be very cool and uh, clear about our objectives and develop a strategy both for the immediate, the short term, the medium, and the long term. It's a major job, but it's an opportunity to revamp many of the mistakes. I do not wish to get into politicizing the matter. I think every government has made mistakes, but here is an opportunity now to rectify the situation. Absolutely, opportunity to rectify the situation. I think uh, this is something which the Indian government is already on track and perhaps they are going to do. Let's wait and watch uh, uh, Tenzing. Finally, are you hopeful that things will be quiet? Do you think uh, the Chinese has got a message at the end of the day? Do you think that the global power equation is today in on India's side? Tenzing. Yes, yes, def definitely. China is getting isolated from international community, is getting alone, is losing business, and business is coming to India, and now is the time for us to be strong and united. Absolutely. And I want to request all Indians who are watching this, stop saying China border. Stop saying China border. Start saying Tibet border. Okay, because that is your traditional point of view. Border police. Yeah, we have that... IDPP. Stop, stop saying China border. Start saying Tibet border. Okay, and... uh, okay, your noted point noted. Jarpom, your final comments. Ten seconds to you. I'm just running absolutely short of time. Jarpom. Yeah, government of India should not appease. Chinese government any longer because you have seen it yourself. They have been blocking funds from Asian Development Bank, World Bank. Okay. To no state no like more. Uh, uh, sorry, Jarpom, I have to cut you short. No more appeasement. No more appeasement. That is what Jarpom Gambling is saying. Okay, so this is an unfortunate and tense situation. China have demonstrated extremely irresponsible behavior, not becoming a professional militaries in the world. That is something which will really corner them in the eyes of the international community. And the panelists and the country is already showing its uh, resolve to boycott Chinese products, Chinese goods. The government has also uh, expressed its intent, made its intent clear with the railways and the telecom industry absolutely trying to corner Chinese big business houses by cancelling contracts and that is something which has started as a trickle it may soon become a movement this is not the last we have heard on the subject uh, viewers thank you for watching the program and I thank all my panelists for participating in this very engaging discussion good night and goodbye